As a matter of fact, we haven't had a chance to hear about uh, Flink. Uh, so please tell us in a few words what Flink is about, and then the topic we will address in our panel will be related to profitability. But first of all, a few words about Flink, please. Thanks, Fabienne. Um, so I, I'll best explain what Flink is all about by um, presenting an example to you, and a real-life example from last night. So I was in a business meeting in Frankfurt yesterday, and I took the train back uh, at about 5 p.m. to Mannheim. And I live in a small town, which is about 20 kilometers away from Mannheim. And the, uh, uh, to, the connection with public transport to get to my home takes about 45 minutes from Mannheim to my home. And so what I did is, when I was on the train, on the, on the trip from Frankfurt to Mannheim, I took out my smartphone, I started the Flink application, and I said, I'm looking for a driver from Mannheim Central Station to Limburger Hof, which is my, small, uh, my, my hometown, at 6.30 p.m. And seconds later, I got the information that a driver was found. It was Alex. I actually knew Alex because he's in the same social network as I am. And uh, Alex was able to pick me up at 6.35 in Mannheim. So I got out of the train in Mannheim, went down to the parking garage, and right as I walked out, a, park, a, a car drove by or, or uh, drove up. It was Alex. I could see it was the uh, Mercedes that he had described in the Flink app. Uh, I got in, and he was actually on his way from Darmstadt to Landau, which is a much longer distance, and my trip with him was only a short distance, about 25% of his way. But I had no wait, he dropped me off right at home, and the, the time saving for me was 15 minutes versus 45 minutes. The whole trip cost me three euros. In this case, actually, he said, don't pay for it, it was a pleasure to talk to you, we had a lot of fun. So that's Flink. Uh, Flink is a dynamic ride-sharing service. We also call it the social mobility network. Uh, we started in July 2011. We launched in to July 2011. Um, and today we have about 100,000 registered users. It's a network of trust, as we call it. So uh, you can create your own groups with uh, privacy settings in the network. And this also leads us to the next offering that we started about four months ago. Um, we have a cloud-based uh, commute solution for companies. And that also leads us to the question of profitability. Um, so today, um, our customers include BASF, Bosch, Procter & Gamble, and Marco Polo. And these uh, customers use Flink to enable sustainable mobility for the employees. Thanks. Thank you, Klaus. Uh, I'm sure there is questions, but I suggest we keep the question to Klaus uh, for the break session. Um, we, we, we've heard many great initiatives, many innovation, many new business models uh, being provided by you gentlemen. Uh, now I have a very simple question. Uh, I am an investor, not in your, not yet, or not in your companies. Uh, but I'm an investor in, on, in other companies, and the question that always comes to my mind is, how much does it cost? How much is the reward? In other words, when do you come to profitability, and what do you need to come to that? Um, I, I receive fantastic business plans. You know, you start with zero revenue year one, and you end up with 50 million revenues with a EBITDA margin of 60% five years later, which of course is not going to happen. So what, how, how do you envision it, profitability? What are the key drivers? <coughs> what are the key obstacles? And what kind of support would you need to achieve that? <coughs> Oliver, you want to start? <laughs> For us, it's um, of course very important, as I mentioned in the in the presentation, to reach the critical mass, and um, for that we need registered users, of course, and active users. So, the one task is to get users on the platform that stay active. You stay active in our case if you find cars nearby. So it's kind of the, the difficulty of who comes first, what comes first, the cars or the users. If you have too much cars and not enough users, then you have a problem with the car owners and vice versa. 
So for us, it's important to invest a lot of money into the customer acquisition and focus on the customers and get them on the on the platform. But like to invest it, of course, carefully and in and, and the right spots. To find that out is important for us. And so the customer acquisition costs versus the long-term value um, is for us one thing that we, that we consider, which is the basis of our business plan. And um, if we can manage this, then we will be able to get into the profitable segment or in the profitable area earlier. So um, next point is that for um, a cheap device, which we want to build into the cars, like which is, needs to be low cost, um, we need also the mass market again. So that's why we focus on the first side on, on, um, on the peer-to-peer -peer car sharing, but aside of that also on the fleet management partners who can put this device into um, other cars and fleet management systems on a pro more project basis. Um, and with that, we, yeah, we can get to a critical mass uh, earlier and, and reduce the cost. So then the cost acquiring customers go down and the long-term value of the customer has a higher chance to get early above the cost to acquire the customer. I guess one question I might have, mm -hmm. and this is probably the same to Klaus, is how, you do, you, how do you make sure that uh, your customer don't short circuit the yeah. platform that you are using to force them to connect? So why don't they go direct once they know one another? Question one. And question, question two, as we discussed earlier, you have competitor offering similar type of service, how do you make sure that they remain your customer and that they don't go to other platform? And is it, by the way, a real issue if they don't go to other um, platform? Well, these are issues, of course. And, um, sorry, Klaus, maybe you want to, sorry, okay, I understood, <laughs> sorry. Uh, absolutely, these are issues, uh, um, definitely, and, and um, that's why initially in our business plan and business plans of startups change over time, as you know. Uh, initially, we based our uh, revenue model and our profitability model on the transaction cost between driver and passenger that we would get a small provision like in your business model. Uh, it is an issue that people uh, shortcut the system. They, they don't necessarily go through the process of asking the driver and the driver then saying, I'm going to take this passenger with me and I'm going to pay a fee for it uh, through electronic payment. Um, so that's one of the reasons why for the first step we are now addressing businesses. With, business, with a B2B model you have a much more stable business. Um, they are actually being also the, the question of switching uh, suppliers and is not as big. If, if a company like, like a BASF or like a Bosch has introduced a, a ride-sharing system like Flink to all of their employees, they will, will not switch from one day to the next. So that's, that's a stable base business that we can build our profitability on and everything else like, like premium accounts or a freemium model, like advertising, uh, is based on the number of users and the number of transactions that you really have in, in the end. And that will be the add-on. But our, we're in the business, I guess most of us, in, in the business of achieving critical mass. And our um, main uh, challenge is how to keep the customers with us before we have critical mass. And mm -hmm. to do that, we enable them to put user-generated content onto the platform, which also makes it harder for them to switch from one platform to the other. We um, give them a fun experience, um, which is not a barrier, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, but this combination of B2B, C2C, and B2C, I think that's, uh, or I hope that that's going to be the solution. I hope for you. Uh, now we have two, two uh, different approach with uh, product, so a very creative and unique approach, a more traditional even though your, your product or your mobility solution is quite unique. How do you address the profitability issue? Yeah. So okay, um, so what are we doing? Actually, we of course cannot provide the same as a software company like this big growth rates, these high returns and so on. So we are a classical industrial company actually. Um, which gives us a more solid foundation as well. So what we are looking at is, of course, longer term. We don't, we don't uh, tell anyone that next year we're going to have like millions of dollars in revenues because it's simply not the fact. What's your right? break-even? How many cars do you need to sell to be profitable? 
Uh, that's about 4,000. 4,000. Yeah. So we are planning at figures of about per year, 4,000 per year. So we are planning at about 16 to 17,000 per year. So that's the midterm planning figure. Mm -hmm. But if I talk about midterm, you're going to imagine already it's going to take some years. Um, of course, as we heard already, this is difficult for, for VCs because um, it takes longer than for a software startup. That's simple defect. Simple defect, sorry. Alexander, what about you? Is profitability an issue with the product that um, you are developing? Is it the question that you are being asked by the investors? We have uh, lots of application possibility after that, what we are doing now. Now we are doing it for uh, air, uh, sports aircraft. Mm -hmm. And this is not really a big market. Um, but in this market, we can uh, be profitable in, in the next five years, mm -hmm. we think, because uh, we have the enthusiastic early adopters, mm -hmm. and uh, we plan in the, the first series to product, uh, produce is about 50, between 50 and 100 uh, aircrafts in the first year. And what, we what, are sh what, what would be order of magnitude, the selling price for that? What? Sell, the selling sell price, price. Um, we don't know it really now, yeah. but it's between uh, 200 and 350,000 K for one mm -hmm. two-seater, and we have already a lot of interest to, 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 to pay for an order, mm -hmm. but we uh, want to do it uh, when we know when we can go in, in production, so uh, we think it's like a little bit like the Tesla stuff. We, we have the first series about 100, for, for example, and we want to sell it. And uh, I think what comes later, uh, there are uh, lots of other applications, possibility. Uh, it will be uh, only an entrance to, to, to the kind of flying with that technique. Can I, can I if, 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 I ask, if I ask you just as a word of conclusion um, to tell us in, in less than one minute, all, all of you, the four of you, what you consider as the most important support that you need to reach this profitability level or return on investment for your shareholders? What, what would you say the most important thing is? I can start. Sure. Um, crossing the chasm, if anyone knows of you, meaning making the shift from early adopter markets to mass markets, mm -hmm. um, cost reduction, um, clear focus on efficiency, and uh, making, of course, highest pressure possible and keep the team motivated to reach a very certain, very clearly outlined goal. And what's, I said one, you delivered three or four, so what's the most important? What's the is most important is to have a plan in mind okay. and a clear goal. That is the same for me. Good. Klaus? Okay, for us, the most important is uh, to engage with partners who have a large reach, a global reach, uh, and if I address, address you directly, ideal partners are telecommunication companies and uh, uh, gas companies like um, Total or have many, many gas stations, um, and uh, also transportation companies like Deutsche Bahn or SNCF. Um, if we can spread the word and make the users of these transportation businesses use Flink as an additional form of transport, then we're done, basically. Okay, this, this is a public declaration now, so <laughs> <laughs> I will have difficulties if I don't follow up. <laughs> Oliver. Yeah, it uh, pretty much goes in the same direction. Industrial partners, uh, especially in our case, it's um, partners to help us scale um, our whole business model. So in our case, it's the registration offices that we need to um, be able to register the people and identify the people that want to use the service so they have to show their driver's license and their passport. So companies like Deutsche Post or um, T-Mobile shops would be helpful in that case. And of course our insurance company is an important partner. So the partners is, um, are, are the most important factor. Okay. Alexander? Uh, in our case it's uh, licensing mm. uh, stuff and regulation for the authorities. Mm. It's really very important. And that we, we, we had the big uh, uh, first step we have done because we got our own um, category of aircraft. And um, the next thing is we have to look on the, uh, on the safety of our aircraft. Mm -hmm. We don't want to have any hurt people. And we had 
a lot of uh, interest people of, of venture capital and of, of, of customers who want to be the first customers. So uh, I think we don't have to think a lot about uh, uh, to, to get the money in. We have so to safety to, to and regulation. Safety, for you. don't to go okay. too early to the market and uh, kill people. That will be one of the key. <laughs> okay. Before everybody goes away for lunch, because it's quite late now and before we collapse, because we are all hungry and thirsty. Is there any question from the audience uh, with regard to this panel? They're all hungry. Everybody is hungry. <laughs> Everybody so is hungry. Thank you so much for your patience and your attention. And uh, we will continue the discussion around uh, drinks and food. Thanks to the panelists. And uh, see you over there. <laughs>